Welcome to the grim, lawless 23rd century, following the fall of U.S. Gov and mass depopulation of major cities at the hands of the multi-trillionaire de Huberton family, baptized in radioactive hellfire. A rare mutation makes Turbo a fiercely pumped scrapper, haunted by specters from her past, surviving the post-apocalyptic wasteland one deathmatch pit fight at a time. But when she rescues the stunning trophy girl, the unlikely duo are thrust into a harrowing odyssey, evading marauding berserkers at every turn on their way to the ultimate showdown as they uncover the horrific truth behind the fall of humanity. Happy Easter, Jake! Happy Easter Sunday. <laughs> Blessed exactly. be those who uh, what, nailed Jesus to a cross. I don't know. Um, I guess that's a bad opening. Um, hi, everybody. Well, <laughs> we're gonna full, we were full, we're gonna be good. we're gonna be full of it today. Crucifixions that are. I guess. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Uh, well, just time stamping. This is Easter Sunday in 2024, and we are closing in. We're uh, doing the very short strokes um, on completing our turbo teaser number two. It's going to say right here in like knockout gray te text, uh, turbo teaser pages one to 12 in there. And I need uh, Kurt to stick that in because he's got to match the font of the first one, right? Otherwise, God yes, knows sir. what could happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we're, we're, we're just like doing all the, you know, crossing all the T's and everything. Um, but that page that you're showing is the back, uh, underneath that is the back cover and you're t tasking me hopefully today with, um, putting all the text in and, um, that's going to be interesting because we have to decide what we want to say. Um, yeah, and... I, I, I'm always dragging us back to this flavor that you threw together. This 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 punk rock flyer flavor, where yeah. it was these it was these uh, uh, exploitation you know flashes on the screen for a movie you know like uh, uh, shocking right. you know a post a post apocalyptic romance you know just those are the yeah. things that I I don't need anything deeper than just that fun stuff, um, you know, because when somebody's checking us out, you know, at a table and they flip over and they're like, whoa, post-apocalyptic romance. You know what I mean? Like, you know, mm -hmm. the future has arrived. And yeah, it's I mean, we, we have we filled have with radioactive less, bees. <laughs> we definitely have a little less space than, than that than uh, last uh, time. Uh, uh, but right. uh, yeah, on the left hand side and then that one little flame area. So we'll, we'll uh, hopefully be getting into that. What I'm going to start out by doing is, um, you know, we have these two faces. Can you raise up the face so that we that it fills the whole screen and I'll do the same on my end? So, yeah, I, to me, these expressions are not great. Um, you know, I, I just want her, like, she's victorious here and, you know, she's... She, maybe on yours, she needs to be like a little madder, a little less angular. You know, it's it's a little uh, aeon flux for me. So, oh, um, man. <laughs> so what what I'm gonna do is what Stan Lee used to do a lot, and that is uh, just redo the faces. Um, so I printed out uh, both of them at this really large size, and it shouldn't oh take me long right now. Okay. To, uh, to just redo them and match the shading and the toning and then just drop them in, in Photoshop live while we're on the air. Let's see if we can do all that. Okay, while cool. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as we're talking, um, what are your uh, thoughts on finishing this teaser? Um, just so you know, people can see where in the process that we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Just so everybody understands, I am complete. I am on the art and hand lettering completely done. So you now have what you're working on, which is the faces for the two, um, uh, the cover and the back cover. So squaring those out, 
We've got text as we just went on about adding onto the back cover, which is that, you know, B-movie exploitation splashes on the screen. Um, once I get these two files from you, I can insert them into um, the printout files for the teaser. So with that, next week, uh, I feel like we're going to be able to sit down, the two of us, with our copies of the teaser and find pick um, anything that can be, you know, on my end, most definitely. If there's something on your end, you know, we'll negotiate it because I just really want to say and ask <laughs> that that following week. So next, let's see, this is the seventh next. Yeah, it's the seventh, April 7th next week. That week, I will put all that stuff together, send you a final, final, final Hey, are you good with all this? And I can run this to my main man, Albert, over at the Kinkos um, and get um, teasers printed. Uh, and uh, then I can start contacting people who have been reaching out to us, which I just want to say thank you to. Um, as I stated, we've I've turned the faucet almost completely off when it comes to our... Um, indie comics exchange program uh because i really want to get back to as we had stated in our interviews with the first nine um the opportunity to come back and share we'll have another six pages of our turbo pit fighter comic completed and share with them and then they can share something with us um i i haven't i'm gonna i'm gonna say it right here um i am super excited to get uh, Robert Ator on who did Kyra and was our first inaugural um, interview because he's working on a comic book. Actually, he's already completed the comic. It was a web comic and he's putting it together for print and he's found the original art from Kyra, Jake. Oh, you mean the, uh, the, uh, the first, uh, what was it? Uh, seven copies or something? Seven issues? The art, the art, his original right. art. Right, that would that that was published as uh, as Kyra yeah. number one, Kyra number two. Right. So I'm hoping that if anything, uh, we'll be able to have a sit down with Robin and um, be able to get uh, uh, you know up to date with him um, from there. But uh, we do yeah, have. Robin sent us some sketches a little while after we did our thing, and he seemed yeah. like he was getting getting back into drawing um so that'd be great to check in with him um i wonder if, I'm, I'm i'm feeling some fomo though are we you know missing out on maybe the potential you know uh artists that we haven't or or publisher that we haven't uh, spoken with yet are we going to have capacity to catch up with new people oh we're gonna have i, I will schedule I, the idea is to put an email out and then as people are responding, the first nine, as they're responding, schedule, but at the same time be able to get um, other individuals uh, in, uh, lined up because we are getting them. Today, someone, we have someone, someone an interview. Someone might not have anything to plug right now, right? It depends on their Yeah, that's, that's very true. That's very true. It is, it is contingent on them sharing something because, you know, we want to give uh, um, uh, a platform for people doing their stuff. But we have uh, Chance Priest, I'm hoping. Last Yesterday, going back to the whole Easter Sunday thing, um, I, I was telling my wife what all my plans were today, and she just looked at me and said, really? It's Easter Sunday, you know. <laughs> and I was like, it is? <laughs> so I'm clueless when it comes to holidays. Thank God I have a, I have a wife to clue me back in. So I did, I did send out uh, something to him. I haven't heard back. Um, I even posted something on Instagram. Um, if it doesn't go off, then of course we always have the option to reschedule, but the following week we have Mike White. Um, we both received our, uh, robot plus girl. Oh, this yeah. is really, this is really cool. Cause it's, uh, like a mailer. Uh, Self mailer. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's awesome. Now, did you receive some comics from, uh, let's see, it was Mike, ba -ba -ba -ba, Jasorka. There was two of them, Bombshell Comics. 
we have him the following week on the 14th of April. Yeah, so I got, he, yeah, I got this. I haven't opened. and uh, Okay. There's, there's also this I haven't opened. Uh, yeah, mine got, mine got sent back to um, uh, uh, Mike. He just contacted me. It was supposed to get to me yesterday, but then it... Uh, I, uh, the address was correct, so I don't know what the heck the problem was. Uh, so we'll we'll hammer that out. Um, but those are three new um, participants, which I think if everybody gets interviewed, well, no, we still have two that were canceled based on Scout Comics, or one was Scout Comics, which was um, uh, Junction Jones, uh, TC. Uh, Pescatore and Loco Gonzalez, and then uh, we had uh, Jay Beth K, uh, who had some technical issues, and he's working on that. So um, just needs a tax refund to help him out. Uh, so uh, yes, the the we're 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 <laughs> rocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to hopefully next week. This week, come and get mine. But um, yeah, that's like I said. That is that's that's the thing that has me most anxious. Um, and, uh, let me just rock. Oh no, hold on. I have notes here. I have just notes. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. So we, right. we, uh, we have a couple of controversies to go over. The first one, um, is, uh, is about printing. Um, I want, you know, I think, uh, Kurt and I are of two different minds. Printing. Yeah. Well, we got to spice this thing up a little bit. Oh, right? really? Are we going to go head to head? You know, damn you, damn you, Google. <laughs> damn, damn you and your archaic web press, Jake. Right. You got to um, get right. with. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I just, um, you know, because Kurt just told me that he is going to be, uh, when we have our final PDF of our 12-page turbo teaser, which will really be, what, 16 pages including cover? Um, that yeah. that uh, he's going to go down to Kinko's, oh. and he's going to use uh, you know copying methodology, and he's going to have to hand staple everything together, and then mm -hmm. uh, you know bag and board and all that. And mm -hmm. and um, I was going to uh, you know reach a little bit deeper into my pocket and just uh, go get a hundred of these quick printed. I thought my number hundred. <laughs> well, maybe now, maybe now that you're doing yours separately, I'll uh, you know I'll rethink the number. But you know I think that's where the first price break is for quantity. Um, and uh, you know I mean how many how many teasers did we move on the first go around when it was only six pages? Oh gosh, I would say I mean we sold. I think I ended up selling a couple dozen. No, 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 no. Six or seven off of my website. And then through the Indie Comic Exchange, 20, 20 okay. I've, uh, I've sent out. So I would, I can safely say we definitely went over 25. So I'm going to get 50 printed. Um, really? So okay. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to feel, I mean, I'm going to feel me, good I, with that. Yeah, I, I sold. I printed out some, and I stapled them, and I did all that, and then I and then I had them to you know to hand out and give away when I was at cons, and then I sold some, you know. But I, I wasn't really worried too much about like you know trying to make a profit on like you know three dollars profit or whatever. So, um, you know, I I was going to do a higher number of it, and just so that I get them stapled, and you know, I think the the quality is going to be good. It's going to be you know uh, this uh this digital quick print stuff it's good paper good printing it's gonna last long um and you know i'm uh you know i'm definitely gonna give a bunch away to people i come across um you know even even people that might not be into comics just to you know go over what i'm doing because i come across a lot of people in education teachers and art schools and all that kind of stuff um but yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna get some some amount of them, and I wanted to try out the uh, you know the professional printers this time around. So that's one big difference, and uh, you know we'll see. Um, you know I I uh, I'm I'm paying more for somebody else to staple these things together. You know this is something that you could do at home, but 
what a pain in the butt when you're when you get all these you know copies made to just like have to fold every page in half, get straight the page order, and you know do all that because I did it with a bunch of copies last time. So, um, you know, my thinking is just like you know I'm I'm starting to look forward to uh, you know the teasers getting thicker and thicker and and you know being a much more substantial product. So we're going from six pages of story to 12 pages of story plus all the extras. And uh, yeah, this ought to be like a bona fide, you know, uh, mini comic. You know, people can can get a little deeper into the story and they could also read all the crap that we're, you know, putting in there about our company. And our, well, the and thing about business. this, this is this is promotional material. Selling them is one thing. I mean, it, it, the reason I I I post them on KurtBrigle.com, which is where you can you can get them. Um, I'm also going to no longer be selling them on the 8th of April. Um, so by the time this video comes out and you watch it, you're going to have missed out probably on getting, and not, not this one, it's um, the original, the original Turbo Teaser. This is promotional material. So this would be equivalent to trying to get an ad in another person's comic book, um, you know, this is pre-internet kind of thinking and stuff like that. Uh, leaving them for free in a record shop or a comic book store or a bookstore, you know, so somebody picks them up. And then, of course, there's some information to be able to get a hold of you or, you know, find out and tease you, you know, when they do end up seeing uh, the completed Turbo Pit Fighter. But one of the things I do want to say, Jake, is this is we have I have 28. I have 28 pencil pages from you scanned that I've been working my inks on top of. I will be next Sunday working on page 21. Now, the reason I'm going to be working on 21 is because I have pages 13 through 20 already you know, preliminarily inked, you know, so I have that first run. So we're, we're about uh, maybe six weeks, you know, and when I say six weeks, it's six Sundays, um, that we could be seeing another six pages. And we've already kind of discussed, um, you know, the idea of, of anthology. I have another project that I'm working on called yeah. From the Barbarian Collected, um, where I've been working on pages and um, uh, from a uh, 2018 book uh, that I had put together of a public domain character. I took the ballpoint pens and gave them my, my value, uh, grave value. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah that we, we've spoken about Crump. Yeah. So, and, but, uh, but there's a, there's an anthology that I want to do following that at issue called uh Crom anthology. So there could be a discussion of us getting maybe not only, um, you know, let's say, what would it be, six, 18 pages of Crom, I mean, of Turbo in this Crom anthology, but which which of those six, which of those 18 pages or, or such? So we've got, and momentum is really what I want to say. And I, I'm, I'm super excited uh, about this because we have been at this for a hundred and now one episodes, which three more episodes from now will be two years. And we've got 12 pages completed, done, in the can, hand-lettered, and ready for print. So, um, you know, my point, however we can yeah. get these in people's hands, um, you know, especially through the Indie Comic Exchange, um, I think is the, uh, the real point of nowadays in building a community. Yeah. Um... You know, I we, we so we we have been discussing and weighing mulling uh, whether or not we should do a, maybe an anthology as we're putting these promotional pages together. Why instead of putting out a teaser, which is just like you know a third of a comic or a half a comic, why not just yeah, combine yeah. it with some other content that we already have laying around, doing nothing in a box, and. Uh, you know, I have my Pearl White Malady. I have lots of sketches and lots of, you know, older work, unpublished stuff. Um, you know, the question is, is like, you know, is it, 
is you know anthology i mean you know we've heard from some publishers saying like you know anthologies are kind of iffy um you know it's good for promotion for sure you know and you know if you're using the japanese you know shogun jump model uh you know you're you're um you know that that's well established you know as uh you know putting something out in pieces and then when it's all finished you know having your own collection for each particular character and storyline so all these models are in play uh you know the question is you know what do we do with our time specifically but you know as people are listening to this you should know there's a lot of different ways to go um and uh you know if you're if you're a cartoonist and you've been around for a while you have a you know a box of art uh it's not doing nothing it's never going to see the light of day maybe you do want to put together some kind of um you know sketchbook you know with your current stuff in there to show off your current stuff and then also you know get some value out of the stuff that you're laying around um you know all options all all different options so well, one uh, of my one of my uh, uh thoughts uh and i really want to explore this more and more is the idea that just because it's been printed once somewhere doesn't mean it can't be printed impartial, you know, partially in other uh, publications, um, you know, anthology or, or or what have you, backup material because somebody has the space in their book and they're like, you know, I want to I want to go over the hundred page mark. Hey, Jake and Kirk, you know, can you throw me the first or or a random six pages from your first issue? Because it's it now becomes. Uh, I think a deeper sense of, of promotional and keeping out there. We used to live in a world where when you went to a comic book store, those were only, those were the only comics that really existed other than maybe somebody who did a print run in their hometown of a couple hundred. And then they got out to the closest com, you know, our, our comic con and then they showed up and tabled at it and maybe drove a little further to go to another it was all right there. Now there's so much already out there and so much already being placed out there that I don't think there's any problem with constantly keeping already completed material out in circulation. And also the idea of variant versions. I've been after you um, and I'm gonna be after you again, you know, probably in two weeks. We got to do something with just your pencils. We really yeah. do because I, I, other than the lettering part, you're ready to go. I mean, this is something that can be printed and put out. Does it need 500 issue circulation? Does it need to be so and so kickstarted? Does it need to be? These are all questions that we can we can have a discussion about. But having it out there, and especially when we do end up going to a show like CI3, which I'm planning on doing as soon as they announce the date, um, you know, getting a room uh, up there. So and then, of course, a table when when it comes along, because that everybody's just said it, it was an incredible, uh, incredible show just for indie creators. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I was uh, I was I was curious about that, too. And I was wor I was. Uh, kicking around the idea of when maybe on a future teaser or maybe on, um, you know, on this current teaser, even, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm feeling like kicking it down the road, kicking it down the road, but, um, just taking the pencils, sticking it in the back of the teaser and calling that the teaser, the calling that the, um, turbo spoiler. And, it's well, that would be next time. That, that would be next time. It's not happening. Yeah, next time. but but the question is like, do you just keep the word balloons empty? Which I would, which I would probably want to do. Um, you know, because then people would say like, wow, you know, what are all these word balloons going to say? <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah. it, it's it's a weird idea. Um, but it's original, you know. And um, I think and um, you know, I was I was thinking about maybe uh you know doing that but then you know maybe somebody would want to see all the pencils so i don't know um you know you can really get just like lost in fractals of possibilities but uh Absolutely. you know that's what that's that's why you know comics comic variants form their own multiverse at the end of the day you know it's like a million different things 
I was watching the, I was watching a YouTube, um, who's that, you know, that guy, Matt with three T's, he does some pretty nice yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, great. So I, yeah, I just watched his, um, his Elf Quest Wendy Peeney uh, I did episode. too. Fantastically and, done. Yeah, I mean, don't you just feel for these people? The ups and downs that uh, Richard and Wendy Peeney have gone through. And, you know, at the end, and why am I bringing this up? At the end of the day, <laughs> Elf, Elf Quest and their first, you know, story arc has been reprinted by um, some some weirdo publisher by Warp Graphics, <laughs> Wendy and Richard Peeney, then by Marvel, <laughs> then by DC, then by Dark Horse. There's, you know, it's been put out in single issues, it's been put out in uh, compendiums, it's been put out in, you know, a digest, it's been put out in magazine form. So what you're saying is absolutely right. You could just keep putting this stuff out and just keep putting it in print. Sometimes it was colored, sometimes it was black and white, you know, and, and, and then... And then the funniest thing was that I don't know why Richard Peeney lost his mind. He just put it all online for free digitally. And I don't well, know if it's uh, still like that. that but, well, but, um, um, Dave Sim Dave Sim did something similar where you could buy the entire Cerebus series in PDFs for like 24 bucks. I think you still can. Right. So right. all of those phone book, all those phone books digitally, you can get them all for the 24 bucks. And I think it's, right, I, mean, I think it's very much based on there's always going to be somebody new coming to comics. Always. Is your book going to be one of the first that they see and they get attracted to, and then it be, and then that makes their taste. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it depends because, you know, Wendy Peeney, you know, she appealed to people that like elves and lore and Tolkien. I loved, I loved them. I, I, I followed them pretty hardcore through my teenage years and probably up till about two ninety five. I actually was trying to become a, a ghost artist. They had auditions for that. And I was yeah. going through it and I actually got to sit down with the two of them for a portfolio review. And I believe it was in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia comic con. So whatever. Maybe, you so, know, maybe, you know, cause they, they kind of glossed over this, but my question is, did, did the whole idea of the ElfQuest character design get based on Weehawk from wizards? Because she had a sketch that they kept showing over and over that was just dead on Weehawk from Wizards, and they mentioned that Wizards was a big influence on her, Ralph Bakshi's um, sure. you know, animated feature, and they also mentioned that she went to work for Bakshi briefly, but um, they never they never explained why she had that sketch. And I never had, nuts. I never had, yeah. I never had any kind of conversation like that. Um, the, the thing about it, I believe, is once again, <laughs> just so everybody understands, the Peenies, ElfQuest, they're pretty much the first independent comic book of the 80s. Dave and, Cerebus, you know, yeah. Yeah. Dave Cerebus, Dave, Cer Dave Sim Cerebus, um, you know, so this is, there's, there's nothing else. You go to, and you go to, and, and you don't get comic book stores until 80, 81, right? Uh, yeah, well, that's when I Because of the direct... One. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so once again, you go back to the idea that there's only so much to choose from. And if you love this format of reading pictures and words, you're just going to keep picking things up because it takes a lot of time for it to go through the process back then in order for the next issue to get there. So there's always something there to uh, to um, um, be yeah. to strike your fancy, you know. Yeah, I mean, when 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 you're such a name, I mean, now they're such a name, and they're featured on you, you know, YouTube and in these channels to a whole new generation. You know, they kept talking about. I mean, I think I think Matt kept having to update the freaking uh, the video up in, and it put in all these screens because she's still in talks to try to get you know some kind of animation production yeah, off, yeah, the, off the yeah, yeah. To this day, well, you know why? Like, you know why? It's pretty fascinating why. Um, there hasn't been one, and he kind of touches on it. Do you yeah, remember? They, yeah, they spoke about it. Yeah. 
It's yeah, because like they, they everybody wanted to turn it into a stupid kill uh, children's uh, cartoon. Yeah, and, and literally she, like she, stupid she, stuff. You know, she kept having to back out, dumb it yeah. down. Yeah, so hurrah to um, her for for standing up to her material and the maturity value of what she was. Uh, you know, both uh, Wendy and and but Richard I, yeah, were expressing I think, I think in the their time, I think the time might be right now because now oh, it absolutely manga, has manga been. manga took over America. So, you know, I wonder if uh, I wonder. If, but but anyway, um, you know, it was uh, it was just a real you know a real interesting history of um, you know the the saga and how much how many different starts and stops they've had and you know I thought it was interesting how they did. You know, they just keep reprinting and reprinting. You know, to me, really, the most the most vital in, uh, data that they give out is what were the sales, you know? And they told you in the beginning um, that they sold 20,000 copies of the first printing, and they were not even happy with the, the paper, and they were not happy with the color, and they were not happy with the presentation. There was, you know, the, the, um, you know, the publisher was kind of shady, you know, and it was all, you know, compromised, but they sold 20,000 pieces. That's really good. And then when number two came out, they, they doubled it. They, uh, they ordered 40,000 printed and they sold all those. So, you know, those, those, all those first pressings and, and, uh, original printings are all still out there, but, uh, you know, those are good numbers. And, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, cause they say, well, DC put it out and they say it sold well, you know, Marvel put it out and it sold well under their epic brand, you know, but what does that mean? What is selling well? I mean, you know, they said they were selling just as much as their as their best superhero titles. And I, I want to know how much is that? <laughs> you know, talking 50K, 100K, you know, what are we doing here? So, um, you know, it's to me, it's, it's really fascinating stuff. But, you know, with, uh, you know, with music, you know, we get, you get like billboard charts and you get, you know, uh, gold records and album sales figures and all that. And in comics, a lot of the stuff is kept kept pretty close to the chest, you know. Like uh, ask, yeah. asking a publisher, "What are your sales?" It's kind of like a you know asking them if they can dance with their wife. You know, it's like um, you know sometimes they don't want to tell you, you know, for good or ill. You know, they they might just want to keep that private because you know. At the end of the day, they are still competing out there with a, a bunch of other products, and um, you know, press runs is always interesting to know. And you know, it's like asking how, how much money do you make, right? What's your income, yeah. right? Some of those. What's in your checking a little, account? A, a little bit personal, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's the game, right? That's the game. So it's good to see you back doing some pages, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, we're 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 rolling, babies. We got things we doing. All right, so I guess it's inevitable, but uh, you know, if you're if 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 this is time stamped for Easter Sunday of 2024, the last week or two on YouTube in the in in comic YouTube has just been a blaze and a buzz with the uh the scandal you know we talk a lot about on this show about comics cartoonist kate babe and uh one of the uh creators ed piscor has come under fire for uh uh texting a girl or uh, emailing and texting contacting a girl that was uh you know first 14 and then 17. i think he just liked the tweet when she was 14 but there was this young cartoonist and um you know, Ed is, uh, you know, a mature adult, and uh, you know he was sending some texts that were that are being considered pretty sleazy, and uh, maybe you know some people say predatory groomery. I don't know; it's all relative, you know. But um, let's just, you know, let's just get Kurt's take on it because you know it is it is upending stuff on you know on on uh, in the comic world right now, especially the online comic world. So. How do you feel about what's uh, unfolding with, with uh, Ed and Jim? Well, I'm just sad because I was in a routine from uh, the COVID and uh, I do breakfast nine o'clock in the morning because I get up at usually five, five thirty in the morning and I do my art and 
then I have breakfast and it's always breakfast with uh, cartoonist Kate Babe. So I, ah. I miss, I miss that I I immensely. It was very inspiring, very informative. Um, I really, really hope they keep the library up because that's how I feel it is. I am going to um, either tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to go to their back catalog and just do a save to watch later list. Um, yeah. and, and, and back go back because, because <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it is, uh, something that, um, only there's only been one, uh, YouTuber that I've watched that really gave an excellent opinion. Um, and I don't want to piggyback on him so much, but I do want to call out and I'll put a link into the video, uh, uh, comic crack, um, I, and I forget his name, and I apologize um, if he does come around and, and see that we've we've given him a little bit of a shout out. Now, here, this is my issue in me making a statement, is I don't have children, especially daughters. And you do, Jake, so I know you're going to have um, a pretty good um, um, take on this. He has uh, a daughter, and he spoke about how, having nothing to do with cartoons, kayfabe, but the continual monitoring um, a, a parent needs to do for somebody, for their child, wanting to be a part of society through texting, instant messaging through uh, social media apps and stuff. Um, the, what has allegedly transpired? Now, I know there's things that we're seeing. I also have um, a huge skepticism on people um, uh, faking things together, especially because of AI now. So I'm not bought into everything and I'm still letting things go. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, uh, uh, you know, go on. Um, what did, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the big anticipation of Jim Rugg uh, making a statement on his Instagram that he was going to have to, so I have to step away professionally and would no longer continue with kayfabe, uh, cartoons kayfabe. Um, that was, I thought, pretty smart of him. Um, I would have done the same thing. Um, and um, the the when when will Ed make whatever kind of statement? A lot of people have been pairing him to uh, um, uh, C uh, uh, was it Lewis uh, C K um, right. Uh, oh, so, so, many. Yeah. so, you know, there's, there's been so much of this going on. Um, I, I think of it in, in, in that, you know, the only thing I would like to say is with probably the last year, um, maybe even less, uh, Ed was very boastful about the channel. Um, and how big it was, the reach, and you know, if he, if they put a book up, it was going to sell out, and so on and so forth. And yeah. I think one of the key things I'm taking from this, because I have a tendency to get very boastful when something is successful, is humility. And there yeah. needs to be moments where you just stop your own train, you get off. You get on your hands and knees and you just thank whatever you want to thank other than yourself <laughs> um, yeah. for getting you here um, and and to take a step back and see if you can actually use your platform to help people. I'm not saying promote their comic books is helping anybody. I'm just saying like in I don't know. And I don't, I don't want to go down that tunnel because um, I, I get curious about you and I, Jake. And once we get our, 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 our first issue of Turbo Pit Fighter out there and we've done all of the good uh, goodwill in our indie comic exchange and we might get a big explosion in the first print run and we sell more than a hundred <laughs> or two hundred <laughs> comics. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I do have it, you know, in my own feeling that, you know, once things start settling down to not lean more into 
being successful, but have the humility to thank people um, for supporting us, me as, you know, so on and so forth. And I'm just really hoping Ed takes care of himself because I cannot imagine, um, you know, uh, seeing even two or three of the things that I've seen that are really just disgusting in the way of just hit pieces on him. So their channels yeah. get their, their, um, their, their due, you know, in, oh, in, yeah. in having, in having, and having some, um, dancing uh, on his reaction, face, right? you know, you know, kind of thing, but him, him mentally and emotionally takes care of himself and knows that he's not, he's not alone and he's got family and he can, you can lean into it, but he's also, he's also one tough motherfucker. I think he is going to lay low. I think he's got enough in the way of, uh, uh, connections and, 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 and how he's going to play this out in a year from now, he'll be back. And I really hope he comes back to the cartoons kayfabe, uh, channel, yeah. uh, whether he has guest hosts or Jim has come around in, 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 in however the development is from a year from now, but I, I really don't, I really don't want to wish anybody harm. I just want to make sure that anybody who has been harmed by this, you know, event, um, you know, that they are not, uh, uh, continually feeling that pain. And it's just something I feel very strongly about when something happens, I can understand somebody feeling like they need to publicize something on the internet in order to make people, other people aware and maybe help themselves. But I just wish it kind of went another, another direction, uh, uh, in our society. I, I know there's really not that many. And it goes back to co Comic Crack and his his post uh, on his YouTube channel about, you know, if you have young people, you know, you have children uh, and they're on social media, um, I, I really do believe you need to be a part of that. Uh, and if somebody comes along and has made the alleged, you know, uh, connection through the message, um, I, I really do feel like you should then be able to say, hey, young lady, let's have a conversation about this and obviously be able yeah, to cut it, think, cut it off in the, in the thing. I think way too many children have way too much freedom, way too early, and they don't understand. I never, un I, man, it, it took me till I was 30 to understand a lot of things about society. So, <laughs> you uh -huh. know, so I'm not, you know, so being at 17 or 14 or 18 or 24, uh, you know, and my parents were also there. I mean, I also want to say that, that that was many times I drove over there and we're like, hey, I'm having this thing going on. You know, can you help me find a point of view on it and everything? Yeah. But like I say, I just want to make sure um, by our channel, if anybody's in some kind of you know situation, you know where you know they need they need don't don't use the internet to help you. You know, find some proper channels to get to get help. Uh, um, and stay healthy and in, in, in your mind. But that's what I got, Jake. Yeah, um, I I didn't I didn't see that take on. I did see the comic tropes guy uh, had a reaction. Chris, and, yeah, uh, I saw that one too. And and um and you know he just said you know said it and you know said his thing and and moved on. I also saw um, what's the guy comic art something? He's oh the art the art of comics guy. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he had like a fifteen minute uh, take on it too. Um, I, I just, you know, my my point of view is, uh, you know, um, I think it's going to be really important when when Ed speaks out and he makes his public statement. He's, you know, he's got to be very careful, you know, what he says and doesn't say. Um, I do appreciate that this woman, this uh, young lady, is not trying to cash in in any way. At least, you know, you know besides just. You know, probably getting a lot of followers, and you know, maybe people are checking out her wares. Um, but it's not like she's suing or writing a book or something like that. Um, so you know, I, you you kind of appreciate that. It's not, um, and uh, you know, there there could be some stuff that's accurate and some stuff that's not accurate. Um, we know that it just hasn't denied anything, so you know, not at least not yet. So um, you know, it, it it's important for people to just you know keep an open mind. You know, as these things evolve, um, as far as uh, people jumping on, and I mean, I have seen, you know, the one I don't know his name, but there's a one guy that has a show. He's very opinionated and he's basically just dancing on the grave, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and getting a couple of episodes out of it. Um, but, uh, you know, then there's the pylon effect, 
And I think there's this other um, woman who is older, you know, she's of age, and she was claiming that, um, you know, he propositioned her for, you know, to, uh, to, to in, in exchange for his agent's contact number, you know, to, uh, to, to do something nasty. And then she also accused him of bulk purchasing his own books to inflate his numbers. So, you know, those are all kind of like pretty strong accusations that, you know, it kind of, uh, it's un incumbent on the accused to then, you know, say whether or not that's true, because where is she getting that from? And if, if she's saying things that are inaccurate, then she has to account for that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of, um, you know, startling in that, uh, you know, these, in that engine has, have been kind of like the de facto number one destination for comic talk online for quite a long time. And they built up a huge um, following and a huge body of um, archives. Um, there, are, there are a lot of very valuable episodes that people can go on there to learn about comics history and comic art and, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the business. Um, you know, I definitely did. Um, I'm not an everyday kayfabe person, um, but, uh, you know, and, and sometimes I will listen to an episode and just bail after a while because I'm not interested in the subject, but, you know, but they've also had very, very good, uh, episodes where I stayed at the end. You know, I think it depends more on the creator that they're talking about and, uh, interviews, you know, that they've had firsthand interviews with people that have been fascinating. So, you know, I guess we could just leave it there. You know, we really don't have much to add, you know, that hasn't been said before, but we did want to uh, just, you know, document that uh, this is the time period, you know, happening right now. And, um, you know, maybe there's going to be kind of like a different reordering of the uh, hierarchy of, um, you know, comic book podcasts that come up in people's searches if Kayfabe is going to be moving down you know, and we'll, we'll see. Oh, what, it will. Um, it yeah, we'll will. see what, we... where, we'll see where Jim lands, uh, you know, wherever Jim lands, he's probably going to, you know, be right back on top with a different co-host, I would imagine. And uh, well, that, that, you know, I believe that, I believe cartoons kayfabe is, is controlled by Ed. Is it not? Uh, I don't know. And that's, that's an interesting story that might be a little bit on the awkward side, but you know, if there is revenue, to be split and it it takes a you know a big um hit right now you know that means that you know uh rug is going to be impacted quite negatively by this you know through no fault of his own and so it's you know it's basically like uh oh thanks a lot on the other hand ed is going to be impacted even more <laughs> because it's sullying his reputation you know going forward so, uh, you know, you can't say that he wanted any of this on purpose. It's just that he was very, uh, I mean, if, you know, if the allegations are true, he was just very uh, irresponsible, you know, yeah. because, um, you know, anything that you put in writing to somebody can come and haunt you later on the cover of the Daily News, you know. So, um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. But, you know, I, I saw some people like conjecturing that, you know, maybe this will open up some space now for some other podcasts, you know, to, uh, you know, to move up in the, in the rankings and stuff. So, um, you know, there, there's, there's going to be a lot of silver linings, I'm sure. And, um, and, uh, and one last question is, uh, did you check out the um, cartoonist stuff? Um, huh? the accusing cartoonist stuff because I did. And yeah. It seems, yeah. To, yeah, she's pretty, pretty avant garde. Um, yeah. you know, very talented. You can see that, uh, you know, she's, she's very promising. Um, and, you know, and I also wonder now if this is going to be a stain on her because, you know, if there's going to be like different camps, you know, some people might hold it against her. You know, I, I, I want to say that, you know, it seems like she, what she did is, very brave and very strong and that uh, assertive and that she kind of sat on this for a while. And then, you know, one day she just couldn't take it anymore. So I don't know, you know, it, uh, I'm not a female. I have daughters, you know, that are, that are young. I have 21 year old and 23 year old daughters. Um, you know, I'm sure they get propositioned all the time, you know, unwanted propositions. And that's just the life, you know, that, uh, you know, women have to uh, endure, unfortunately. 
um, some men too. I, you know, I, when I was growing up and I was a kid on the streets of uh, Greenwich Village, I'm not gonna say that I wasn't propositioned by raincoat people. Um, but uh, you know, it's 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 I, I you know this is like all day every day you know with women in the workplace and you know the, with 2024 now you know we're seeing a big difference. You know, if this was happening in the 70s or the 80s, there there would be a lot of people that would laugh this off and say, "Oh, big deal." He, you know, he he tried to come on to her and she rejected him. That happens every day, and uh, you know, and we're in a different time now, and I think that's good. You know, that we're in a time where uh, unwanted advances can have a lasting ramification. You know, for somebody that does it. You know, women had to. Women had to. Uh, I mean, you know, the whole thing with. Uh, you know, uh, Bill Cosby and the whole thing with, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the, the stuff that you used to see right on TV, like right on the Johnny Carson show, like women were, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, insulted and, and stuff. So it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a new, a new era we're in right now. Um, and, uh, you know, so I guess that, I, I guess we can move on from that, but, um, you know, yeah, we're we, at the we, we're over the forty five minute par, uh, point, which we like to keep these episodes bite sized because we like to get our fans back to reading comics, making them. If are they you okay do. with these faces here? I'm going to. Uh, no, to no, you, you need to you need to redo them. Oh really? <laughs> Jake, you know what I was thinking right when you started? I was, I've been watching you out of the corner of my eye working on these. Do you know like? There, I, I have a feeling that you're going to have to play um, the what Dave Sim did with service, which which was you know he'd do the layouts, he you know he, he you know some good decent penciling and everything for that, but he had to ink service, so he because right. he he knew how service needed to look, you know, I. I I, I openly admit I I am not I, I sequential faces are like uh, completely uh, uh, ignorant to me and I and I work at it all I can but what I only have is I mean I've got a YouTube channel where I can talk and ask you questions and anything like that so I am going to move forward uh, with that you know I'm getting into you know certain characters maybe and asking right there on the camera you know should I go right or left. But you might have to become the guy who does uh, this type of uh, work on um, on Turbo, you know, just so we do keep the consistency. Because she's really your gal, character-wise. My input was a lot of like, yeah, but what about this? And yeah, hello. here, I just sketched this. What do you think? And, you know, and then you went off running and you penciled these first 28 pages. I'll just show off again. Right. Um, and then you were going to hand them to me for me to ink. So, and then even back then our process would be, you know, this same level, like now Kurt, it, this, this is not, she's not, she looks too much like this and not a lot like that. And you would, you would make a sketch. You would literally make well, a sketch you know, and I'd go I think... home with that. And then I would go there, but I think this is going to be pretty damn cool. Even with the Photoshopping, mapping this in. Yeah, I think we should probably do an episode or a segment on on this um, at some point because um, How to draw you know turbo. I think it well it I think we need to talk about Stan Stan and Jack and uh, you know redoing faces in general um, you know and and then you know I have this whole side thing where I do paintings of a female face and it's basically the same face over and over and over and over but with that there's just nuance and there's just differences and you know it's just fascinating the infinite combinations of face geometry you know that face recognition software is really um you know um advancing too and you know when it comes to an artist and you're just trying to draw basically the same face on on a character going through different emotions you know whether or not that's you know a skill that you can work on whether or not there's uh people to look at as great examples um or whether or not it's just a matter of yeah you just gotta redo it and redo it and redo it so i i, I would bookmark that for another uh another okay. episode one day and maybe All what right. i'll do is um 
I'll go into the garage and I'll, I'll get like a wide view of my camera so I can show you a couple of dozen of the, the you know, face paintings that I'm talking about. Right, you know, right. Because what I'm trying to say is like, you know, I'm sitting down to do a face. I'm like, okay, I, I know Turbo has kind of like a look, but I'm not able to execute that perfectly every single time. And you get what you get. And, right. you know, I'm, you know, and, and the whole point of Jack Kirby um, not being able to do it either says something. And then with Stan would, would have John Romita go back and do Jack's faces sometimes because he was just nailing it more consistently in the romance mags. And he wanted Sue Storm, you know, in this particular panel or that particular panel, you know, to just hit the right note or the face. And, um, you know, uh, and, some, and Jack, you know, maybe Jack was too grumpy uh, about redoing it. So he would give it to somebody in the pen, you know. Anyway, um, let's wrap up. Uh, if people want to uh, order your, la this is your last chance to order uh, Turbo Teaser number one, which I'm not showing. <laughs> I'm showing... Uh, there you go. I have one copy left. A bag yeah, of that's all I have. And it's not that's this gonna one. Be on a <laughs> it's going to be on a pedestal in, in the museum. But Kurt is bound if you uh, postmark uh, your request by April, what do you say? April, April 8th, uh, 2024. He will send you Turbo Teaser page one to six. Or you could just wait like a week later and get Turbo Teaser number two, pages Big one down. to 12, plus lots of bonus material, which you've seen us working on. Um, if you don't want any of this stuff, well, maybe you'll be more interested in our flip throughs on our Comics to Influence channel or our indie comic creator where we interview human beings. And um, we haven't interviewed a female creator yet, but uh, that's got to be one Very of good our point. goals for this year, too. I um, agree. So uh, with that, uh, We'll see you guys next time, and uh, Kurt, take us home. All right. We will see you next Sunday. Thank you.